Hello, my name is Brian McMillan. I'm a partner in a business called Prairie Stained Glass and School of Craft in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Uh, if you go to our website, you'll see that we have dozens of full-size patterns available that you can use to make your own stained glass projects. Um, however, often you either want to make them smaller or larger. Making them smaller isn't really that uh, challenging. You can bring it to a, a photocopying uh, outlet and you can have them downsize it for you. Uh, making it larger, though, can be a bit of a challenge. So what I'd like to do is show you the process that we use to enlarge patterns um, for different purposes. So what I've decided to use as my sample is I have a kitchen cabinet door. And actually, we often will go to our, our local uh, ReStore, you know, Habitat for Humanity ReStore, or anywhere that sells, uh, you know, lots or odds and ends of uh, kitchen cabinet doors. And these make wonderful frames for stained glass projects. So I have this frame, and what I want to do is I want to take this pattern, which is available full size, but is not the right size for what I want to do. And I want to uh, adjust this so that it'll fit into this frame uh, and, and look as if it was meant to be, rather than just slapping a, uh, a colored border around the outside of it. So the first thing that I need to do is measure the opening size. So this is the back of the frame. And if I take a measurement here, I've got 12 and 3 eighths wide from wood to wood. And if I go this way, I have 27 inches high, again, wood to wood. So I don't want to make this window and have to force it into this opening. I want to make sure that it's slightly smaller so that it'll slip in and then I can hold it uh, in place in many different ways. I can use little nails. Um, generally speaking, we use clear silicone uh, to silicone our pieces into uh, wooden frames like this, etc. The first thing we want to do is we want to size the, uh, figure out exactly how big we want this uh, full size panel to be when we're finished. So, generally speaking, our rule of thumb is we take an eighth of an inch off the two sides and an eighth of an inch off the top so that it'll fit into the frame with a little bit of wiggle room. Now the reason we'd only take an eighth off the top and not the bottom is if you take an eighth off both of those, it'll be sitting down a quarter of an inch, which is really unnecessary. As long as we have an eighth of an inch space on three sides, it's going to fit perfectly. So what we like to do is use graph paper, and this graph paper comes in a roll. This is 42 inches wide, and I think you'll find that probably your local stained glass shop will sell this. If not, um, we buy this from drafting companies, um, people that used to, before the computer age, used to use this for doing most of their drawings. So we have basically 10 squares per inch. So that makes it very easy to make a very accurate size panel, just counting these squares. Um, we still use a ruler most of the time to double check things, especially if you're doing anything too large. You'll find that once you get past a few feet, you do, these do tend to lose a little bit as far as accuracy goes. But what I've done, if you look at my pattern here, you will see that I have made one line, which is the outside um, dimension that I want to have my finished piece be. So when I go to solder my piece together, I'm going to make sure that I put my boards right along this outside line and the piece does not grow on me whatsoever. Uh, I decided that I wanted to use half inch lead as my border material. Uh, you can use zinc, you can use lead, or you could use the copper foil edge. Uh, generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend using the leaving the copper foil edge. It's nice to have a bit of a cushion. And we use H lead, not U lead, when we put things into wooden frames. And the reason for that is, number one, again, there's a bit of a cushion because when we put our glass in the top here, on the bottom where all the weight is resting, you have a bit of a cushion down there. Second of all, if we do not take a proper measurement and the project is slightly too big, we can take a rasp and we can actually uh, take lead off of any either the sides, the top or the bottom to make it smaller. And it just gives us a little bit of uh, a fiddle room to work with. So. so once I know what my outside dimension is, I put my lead on the pattern and I make a mark where the inside or the heart of that lead is so that I know where I want to cut the glass to. So what I'm saying is that the H lead has a channel so the glass can fit in from either side. In this case, we're only using it from one side. So when I take my piece of glass and I cut it properly, it will line up right with this inside line I have. And um, this will be done in copper foil. So I'll cut all my glass to this inside line, grind, foil, solder it together. And then I'm going to solder the lead onto the border. And when I'm finished that, I will have a piece that will fit exactly into the size of opening that I'm looking for. 
All right, so the first thing I did with my, my pattern is I cut off the border line on all four sides because if you leave that black line on there, um, it is confusing because sometimes you'll cut two pieces instead of, I'll show you in a minute, we're just going to extend these lines so that it'll just be one piece. So it'll actually look like you intended for this piece to uh, be this size. So the first thing I did is I measured the center. So I made a mark on the top and a mark on the bottom on the center of, the pa uh, of, of this particular pattern. And same thing on my graph paper, I made a mark at the top and a mark on the bottom. So now what I can do is I can line this up. And the only thing I have to do now, I mean I could have marked it on the two sides here too and also on the sides here, but sometimes it's nice to move it up or down to, to have a little different look. So I'm thinking that I kind of like it this way, which means it is actually uh, not exactly centered, it's slightly further towards the top. So once I've done that, I take some regular scotch tape and I line up the lines and I'll, what I'll do is I'll put one in the center so I've still got some flexibility and it's important that you get it good and flat so I'll pull it over and I will line it up there and tape it down And then of course I can go along and I can tape it all the way around and that will keep it uh, nice and firmly down attached to this. So in this case it is a little looser so I'll just make a small adjustment. And now what I can do is I can take my pencil and whenever, wherever I have a line that continues, so like this one here for example, I'll just extend that slightly. This line here I will extend that over to here. This one I'll extend this one over here. So you want to try and keep the movement, right? So this piece here, I've got this movement, so it's continuing all the way through there. Same thing here. In this case, though, I think what I want to do is I want to continue this one and then bring this one over and let it stop there. And then this one here, I can just continue over. So this is something you have to uh, spend some time and effort and that's why you need to use this funny thing on the end of your pencil and eraser quite often. So you'll find you'll do something and you stand back and what I, what I like to do is tape it onto the wall and you stand back and you take a look and sometimes something that doesn't really strike you as awkward at that point will, will look a little more obviously awkward when you tape it up on the wall. And if you're not in a rush, leave it for a couple of days. You know, do it once. Uh, tape it on the wall, the next day come and take a look at it, make sure that you're still happy with it, and um, then just you know let the process uh, move ahead slowly until you're completely happy with it. So once you are happy with it, then what we do is we use these Stabler permanent Lumicolor pens, and we use a fine one. Uh, depending on the width of line, if you're using a, uh, if you want to use lead cane, then of course use a, a felt pen that has a wider tip to it, so sometimes we'll use a Sharpie. Um, but usually by the time we get going with these fine ones and they've been uh, used a little bit, it's a really perfect thickness for copper foil. So it's just a matter of taking this afterwards and then going over our lines again with the felt pen. And you get good at this, you should really only just go over the line once. If you go over it twice, you're usually going to um, have a wavy line that's not going to be quite as clean. So I hope that this has given you a good idea of how you can take an existing pattern and adapt it to fit into uh, a different size frame. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we have lots of full-size patterns that we sell through our website, www.prairiestainedglass.ca. Thank you very much.